Welcome. Today we're making cyanotypes. We're making cyanotypes today with shapes. These are rhombus shapes. The rhombus shapes in a certain order. You can get a really neat 3D effect cube. And I really like using those to make cyanotypes because there's so many different ways you can modularize them. Like this, like this is ready right now. I, I, I don't think we need to change anything on that. I like how there's two missing here, one missing here and none missing here. This was worked on yesterday. Let's open the window up and let it in. Adjust our cyano, movable cyano studio to accommodate as well. There we go. So here's our swath of light coming through there. I made this one yesterday. Trying to get the exposure just right. It's no easy feat. All right, well, we'll see. We'll see if it figures anything out. So we already can't see the original squares here, or the original rhombus shapes here. They're pretty much, they're blending in to the existing exposure that we did yesterday. Let's place this guy here. And we'll place this guy here. Maybe not. That feels right. I'm looking for this right here, this little M, to be the same size. I feel that this is an M shape. It could be a W shape, depending on the way you look at it. I'm trying to make the shape on this side equal in size to the shape on this side. And then same for this. Like this one's a little longer, so I'm going to scoot it like that. There we go. We're gonna bring in some more shapes now and we're gonna see what we can do with those shapes because there is just an unlimited number of options when it comes to cyanotype. Let's get our Kapla blocks. Okay, so for this, we'll put some blocks down and we're actually even going to do this part in the, in the little bit of shade that we're afforded by our blinds being able to open and close. So I'm going to go get another piece of cyanotype paper. for a treat because this cyanotype paper is a super dense cyanotype paper. And what I mean when I say that, and you're going to see in just a moment, is that this paper has this kind of paper because I put too much on it. So when I brush these, uh, I give them a quick brush in the light sensitive chemistry that makes cyanotype, and then they dry. And sometimes as they're drying, you can tell there's just pools of chemistry collecting on top of the paper. This is that chemistry reacting just the littlest bit with the moisture in the environment and then resettling onto the paper. 
what we're going to do, and it won't matter, it'll actually give us a very nice deep blue, but what we're going to do is put some of these Kapla blocks on it. I like to start in this manner. I like to find where the center of the paper is, and in this case, we need to do one thing. We need to fold over the paper rebate, because I just tore these out of a, uh, it's a mixed media art book. There we go. So, now all we have to do is figure out where the center of the paper is. Okay. Trying to get it equal. This little break point here, I'll make it a little shifted, and that little break point there should both have an equal amount on either side to each other. This is not scientific, assuredly, but that's okay. In fact, this is a good enough place to start. Here's our through line. And we're just, we're defining uh, a set of parameters at this point. We are giving some level of structure to an otherwise formless paper. Like this paper has a border in that we put, we, we, we defined the edges of the paper by not letting the cyanotype chemistry go all the way to the edge. That's why there's a white border already. This finished print will we'll have a white border on it, much like this one. What we are now doing with these Kapla blocks is creating a, uh, a field that things can happen on. Um, it's not the best worded sentence, but worst wording sentences to come. And there is no particular, if you were going to guess what I was about to do, I don't think you could, because I don't think I know what I'm about to do. These develop over time. Uh, as far as I can tell, I don't have a plan when I start these. They just, they make themselves evident as I go about because either symmetries present themselves or asymmetries present themselves. So I can decide now to lean in, make this symmetrical which I think I'm enjoying. I'm just gonna even it out so it's a little straighter. And I can now do the same thing over here, symmetrify. There we go. And now there's a new thought about to enter the process, is do we now give this uh, depth beyond one level of Kapla block? Should I start stacking? blocks like that because this is about to change things fundamentally if I start it like basically what we are now doing is adding a second layer of shadow to this image and the second layer will be less sharp and less well defined because it is higher up off the paper so therefore it has a farther distance for its shadow to travel which gives it more of an opportunity to stretch and move over time compared to something that is much closer and casts a very small, short shadow relative to its height. That was sure a lot of words. Now we're gonna put this here, and we already got some light sneaking in here, but I'm, I'm really okay with that. I think that's a good thing. Okay. We're gonna move this up as well. Move this into the light a little more, just so we can see what we're doing. Excellent. I like to stay, you know, on my feet making cyanotypes. It's, it can be a very energetic and enjoyable process. If you set aside the time, treat it like a meditation, say, you know, hey, I'm setting aside some time to make some cyanotypes. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to be. Because a meditation is sometimes described as just the absence of thought. You're, you're allowing your thoughts to move past you. In this case, we're allowing our thoughts to move through us and onto the paper. And then we don't have to keep thinking about, what would that look like if I did it? Because we have an immediate answer. Kind of like the idea of all the blocks Kind of living on the paper. I don't want necessarily too many off moments where they're where they're leaving the paper. 
because I like the holistic nature. They're, they got everything they need, the blocks. That's nice. Oh, it happens. It's not nearly as detrimental as like a domino effect where you're doing a bunch of dominoes for like competitive domino toppling and oof, they all get knocked over. That's probably devastating. Let's build this up more. Hashtag cyanotype. What I'm trying to keep, it's not 100% easy to do, but it is worthwhile. I'm trying to keep parallelity. So all these blocks, I'm trying to keep it so even if they're spaced out apart, they're still parallel with each other. One's not, one's not converging. They're parallel. That's the goal. That will create a better uniformity of field. And we're just coming up with terms and words all over the place here. My dad was a, a coin dealer, meaning he just found coins at coin shops, knew what they were really worth, took them to coin shows, and then sold them to people who said, yeah, it is worth that much. So that's his profession. And um, he would, I don't remember why I was going to tell you about my dad, but he was a great guy. And that's, that's reason enough. Sometimes my divergence in explaining why I'm about to explain something leads us astray. Okay. And so we're doing this all in the shade indoors, all this cyanotype uh, pre-making of them. And that allows us to be more methodical and a little less hurried. I like both of those things as life um, modes, a methodical, less hurried life. If I have ever a book about myself, let it be called that. Okay. And I'm also going to push this out of the way a little bit. I am satisfied enough that we can now start the exposure of this. To do that, all we have to do is open the blinds again. And we don't have to move it or do anything. It's all good. We just get to leave it like this for a little bit. And the same for this. We'll, we're going to look at this. Let's see. We can probably put this back on. And what I realize in this moment now is that I actually want to turn this 45 degrees or so. As soon as I do that, it's going to take this and this and, and this and this and, and jilt them all. So to overcome that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to just move it up one plane and up that way. So Z axis up one block, X axis that way. Cool. It, it moved it. We got it. That'll let us move this paper without it uh, wonking out and making it hard for me to turn the paper quickly and easily. Okay, that's about right. Parallel with each other. Parallelocity achieved, yes. Okay, and same for these. I gotta find a place for these. How about right on our new friends, this block. Boom. All right, and I think it's now time to push this one in 
because we want it to clear the paper. Same for this one. And we're going to move these two in. And I think that's, we're ready to now turn it. So let's go ahead and adjust this until we see one of these, this line here where it's kind of casting a shadow that goes diagonally. We want all these lines to become uh, straight lines instead of diagonal lines. So we're going to turn it. Turn, 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 turn. Okay. And now all these lines here, the ones that are going this way, are a parallel. Now they're, yeah, all the run, the sunway runway is going this way now. So these are the shortest possible shape they could be, you know, shadow wise. And then uh, all these ones are their widest possible shadow they could be. Best of both worlds. And now we're going to do this, where I'm just going to push these two down. And I'm going to wonk that. Here we go. Like that. And then we go like this. And we add that there. And we go like yar. Super. And then that goes like char. Now it goes this way. Cool. No idea. It sure looked like I knew what I was doing there where I did, didn't it? Looked like I had a real plan. Okay, now we're going to turn this again, and we're going to do it the opposite direction. So we're going to take it back to what it looked like, which is like that, and now we're going to turn it until these lines get really fat. And now they're roughly parallel with the sun. There we go. Okay, we can remove this. This is going to be a neat one. I can already tell crazy weird things happening with this one. And do we turn this again? I don't know. Sure. We'll go that way. Let's try to give them that same diagonality again. And now we can remove some of these and take them and make them go like that. Because that'll add some visual interest to the finished cyanotype. No idea. Otherwise, what it's there for. Okay, we can move these out, replace that, move this, and that's looking good. This is good, good. Yeah, that looks fine.
Well, we got all these shapes, so now what do we do with them? I know. First of all, let's finish this one a little more. Let's see if my prophecy comes true. When I turn this paper, will these blocks turn with it? Or will they try to stick with the paper and half try to stick with the floor and therefore be all jostly? Let's discover. Turn a turn a turn a. Got our answer. All right. Well, let's just take them off then if they're going to be that recalcitrant. And we'll move this center block out because we are deft and able. And put these for here. Let's get another piece of paper going because we have some more. So I'd say that one's that one's good to just chill. It's looking great. Let's put another piece of paper in its stead. This one is two-sided. It's one side that's fully coated and the other side has a border. So let's inform our decision about what to do on the back by first building the image that'll be on the border side. I think I want it to be a cube. Trying to find the center. Keep it parallel, roughly. Looks good. I really like the effect of these guys kind of coming out like that. So I'm going to stack them. How many high? I don't know. What's reasonable? Whatever we say is reasonable. OK, yeah, it can go that way. I like how it, it now is dynamic. It's kind of, I mean, I know what I think it looks like. I don't want to impose that on anyone. Yeah, I'm making a jack in the box. It's definitely a jack in the box. Okay. Inadvertent jack in the box creation. Okay. Well, it's unique. What do we do with it? I think it needs a circle. Some sort of... No, I, this isn't working for me. I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it less, less that. I'm going to make it more... Sometimes you just got to change it because you think you got a better plan. Sometimes you don't have a plan at all. All good choices. Okay. Now we have informed ourselves uh, kind of the total size we're working with. These little tiny triangles that are created are, they should be the same size for each one of these. That looks nice. There we go. And now we can move this a little tiny bit more because I want an even, even amount between this and this and this and this. It's not quite there yet. But this is a world of our control. We decide what exists on the matrix of this paper. The focal field. Oh yeah, that was a thing. My dad is a coin dealer and he invented a term because coins are graded on a certain scale, extra fine to very fine to almost whatever. He invented a term for a grade that was in between grades of coin, a slider. Because depending on who's looking at it, they might see certain things that would make it either an extra fine grade, which is probably one of the best, or just a very fine grade. Literally, the terms are extra fine versus very fine. So depending on that, grade you give a coin, it could cost a lot more for a collector to buy it. So my dad invented a term and was credited with the term slider for a coin that can go either way. It just depends on the person and their knowledge. So we wordify, well we make cyanotypes, but 
I'll probably forget all of them. And I'm okay with that. Looks pretty cool. Let's bring in another sheet of paper. We're not going to put as much effort into this one. I keep a sheet of, keep several sheets of cyanotype paper in my notebook that is always in my bag and my backpack because I never know when I'll see a shadow that I just got to take. Say, that's an amazing shadow, man. I borrow it forever. And the shadow doesn't say anything. But it just stays there and says, all right, there we go. Shadows aren't used to having their photographs captured. Light is the thing we try to capture in a photograph. See me. Shadows are all bashful. Okay. Looks like I got another great piece of two-sided paper here. Okay, so let's do a head-to-head. -head. And I like this as a concept. Got the Genesis controller right there and the Super Nintendo controller right there. They're both great buddies. Looks like we got a little more sunway runway here. Let's see if I can find another piece of cyanotype paper. Because I have a whole closet full of this stuff. I just have to locate it. Oh, that was easy. Okay. We've got full size sheets and there we go. Purple stuff. Oh, sunny. Ooh. Let's do cookie cutters. Okay. So we got these cookie cutters here. Onto our cyanotype paper. Let's start with this guy. I like a little gingerbread. And then we got an uh, elephant, he's happy. We got a, a doggy. Got an ice cream cone. There's a heart. That looks like a nice number. What happens if we put some red pepper flakes onto that paper? I'm asking this in a way that sounds rhetorical, but I actually know the answer. Just to make sure to sweep all those up 
afterwards. Because, man, you don't want those in your eye. You don't really want them anywhere on your person. Okay. Now, we can start removing some of these cubes from the cyanotype with all the... Well, I'm going to say cubes. I'm treating this shape as though it is a solid cube. I know it's not. It's an octagon. It's a hexagon, actually. And I know these are rhombuses stacked diagonally to look like diamond shapes that are coming off the top of the, rhombus, of the hexagon. But let's move past that. And I'm going to try to visualize what this will look like when it's over. Okay. This is going to come off. And it's going to build one of the sides of the cube. And in a moment, that one's going to come off and build another side of the cube. And then the third one will come off and build the third side of the cube. Yeah, we got this. <laughs> Inadvertent additional shadow. Okay. I'm going to turn these ones a little bit. Because I have a... I have a thought in mind for them. They're both symmetrical. So if I turn them upside down and shift them in position, there we go. And then just kind of reorient the stuff that's already there. There we go. Not perfect, but that's okay. All right. And now the same for this. It gets flipped and then bumped. Super. And now we turn it 180 degrees from the way it was. And then that should be it. Gotta line these up again just a little bit. Yeah, and then like that. And then that gets adjusted. And then I'm gonna do this to make it easier on myself for a better final product. I'm just gonna kind of block out the cord from being exposed again to the sun because it, it'll just get really messy if I. If I don't do this, if I don't cover up the shadow with my, with my hands that is otherwise this cord being exposed twice, it's going to give us a very disconcerting effect where there's just kind of two cords and we don't know which one's which and I don't know. I'm not into that look. I want to create some semblance of reality that helps us jive with it. All right. It's looking good. It's looking very unique. And now we go like this, because that's fun too. Give them a little extra. And I'm blocking some of my other cyanotypes while I do this, and that's fine. It is okay. No real rules in cyanotype, just, just things we do want to do or not. Because these are little universes you control. Nothing here that you don't want. If you don't want it here, you don't have to show it to anyone when it's done. Okay. Give that a little more. Still, the longer I block these shadows, the stronger this little contrast will become on the finished cyanotype, and the better off the depth illusion will be. So this is worth the bending over and weird weirdness. All right. And now I think I can turn this over and do it all again, because I believe the back of this paper is also coated. Yes, okay, so let's do this. Figure out on the other side where it goes. 
looks like that. And now these will be a little more interlinked, I think. We can let their cables mesh. Go. Oh yeah, sorry, that's kind of right near the mic. Okay, that feels good. Same for that. Okay, we get to put this now further down, slowly building up our cuboidal shape. And now what do we do with these? These little guys. I don't think we do anything with them. I think if this is a two-sided piece of paper. It's not. We don't have to do a thing with them. They're just done when we finish. Clearly this little line here where the shade has been moving is exposing less on this particular part of this cookie cutter than one that's had full sun the whole time. In fact, we'll be able to move this just a little bit and you'll probably be able to see that. See that difference in color? It's about to go away because this is about to get the sun exposure and then bring it up to this level of gray, gray aqua green. It's hard to know what, what to call that color. I always call it gunmetal gray. A flat gray is what it looks like when it's fully exposed to sun. Okay. And we have A little bit more to go on that one. A little bit more to go on that one. I mean, this is really it. Cyanotype is, it's laid back if you have the privilege of doing it indoors. And there's really nothing but just watching shadows stretch and move as you wait for your cyanotype to fully expose. That's, that's really all there is to cyanotyping is, here it is. And then obviously exposing and, and developing the prints is fun. You get to see your results. That's very enjoyable. So I want, only this one should be white in the final cyanotype. Only this little section of, of the cube should really render as white. All of the other ones should have some level of light blue that will give them a little bit of contrast and, and tone. So, 
by keeping always this, basically this diamond shape of this hexagon covered, I'll ensure that there's always a white part here. And by giving these now a new base exposure to some sun, I will ensure that they will become a little bit light blue and a little bit dark blue. And as soon as I cover one of these back up, that will lock in the color underneath it. For example, if I put this right here right now, there would be two different colors, a very light white blue and a white, and whatever that becomes in the end. I'm going to cover this up. Yeah, why not? Now is good. Now we'll be good. And now we take this one off. It's looking real good. And then in just a moment, we're going to get to develop these. And I think development is one of the most fun parts of the process because it's very immediate. It's all of a sudden, well, actually, we have one more side to go on, on this one. But when it comes to development, it's so enjoyable because the colors just immediately come up. This becomes, instead of gray, like a dark blue. And all that yellow stuff that is kind of yellow-green, that becomes white. And uh, it lets the original color of the paper shine through because if it didn't get any sun exposure, then that lets the original paper come through again. For example, there'll be a very sharp but thin white outline under all of these cookie cutters for the most part, except for maybe the edges here, because they are touching the paper. They are coming into direct contact with the paper, so very little light is bouncing underneath them and actually exposing that part of the paper. So cookie cutters look really good for that reason. They give a sharp outline. These also will look really nice. Okay. All right, now we do the other side. And you can actually see this one in that time we turned it over was already. Now we know where to put it. Ooh, we can do a little bit of border work on this one. Could be doing this in the shade, but where's the fun in that? There we go.
All right, well, this one's done as well. One side, two sides. You can go under here. There we go. And I think this one's done, but I want to give it a little zap for funsies. Just turning it 180 degrees. Neato. Okay, I'd say this one's done. Yeah, that's all done. That, deal with those later. In fact, we'll deal with them now. This is a good time to clean up from this stage of the process. Put away our cookie cutters. Now it's going to be time to sweep up and then bring in the water. In fact, we can skip the sweep up. We can just bring in the water. I'm just filling a, a container up with water right now. It's got, it's kind of a big plastic trough. Just gonna put some more water in another container. 
That'll be our bonus water. done with our exposure here. Let's do this. That. That. doing something. I don't know what, but it's looking like something is happening on the cyanotype, and I like that. Now, we can take this off. Looks good. Let's cl close first. That one will be last. We'll go with this one. It's kind of our first one. It's okay that a little bit of uh, light is entering into the development process. It's, it's only going to give us a little more character as it develops. It's not going to hurt it. If it was a lot of light, I'd say, yeah, it'll, it'll, it will reduce the overall white that you can get out of the finished product, but it's not a lot of light coming in, so we don't really need to concern ourselves with it. it looks pretty cool. It's, uh, Zoom in. I can see the brush strokes on the paper, like they're actually visible pretty clearly on this paper. You can see them right here. nice. We can put it up here for now. Let's develop our next one. That was these, these blocks, the Kapla blocks. So all that kind of stuff, this was, as you recall maybe, this was a very uh, top scum heavy piece of paper. You can still see it here, but all those will likely wash away in the final print. Or they won't, and there'll be a lovely reminder of having a softer touch when brushing these cyanotypes next time. We got another 
one here. Got our video game controllers. And this is a two-sided cyanotype, so let's see how the other side looks. Oh, I like the other side a lot. Wow. Oh, gee whiz, I like that. Okay. That's looking real nice. And so all of these cyanotypes are 11 inches across by 14 inches tall. And I, uh, I make these cyanotype sheets myself. I just buy a, a pack of paper that has like 70 sheets in it. This is 90 pound artist uh, mixed media paper, so it's got a nice quality about it. And I just coat these with my own cyanotype light sensitive coating, and then they're ready to use. And I also sell four packs of this paper. So what we did today, you could do exactly the same way with um, a four pack of this cyanotype paper. And those are on lightprintpaper.com. There are other sizes, smaller sizes as well. Let's see how the cookie cutters look. That's a one-sider. Yeah, the cookie cutters, for me, are always very crowd-pleasing. They, they, to me, remind me of like making a fax. Like you just kind of, you put stuff on the platen of the fax machine or like a Xerox machine and you press the button and what you get is a copy of things sitting on a piece of glass and that's exactly what these remind me of. It looks like something you just, you put these cookie cutters on a piece of glass. And I think the chili pepper flakes, they to me evoke kind of a snow or like a starry night depending on the context. And do we have another one? We do. Let's see, is this a two-sided? It is. So, this was our first side. This was our second side. Let's start with the first side. Ooh, yeah, I like that gradient. That's looking real nice and subtle. It's like the box is topping itself. And now let's turn it over. Ooh, that's a very different one. That's what I like about the two-sided cyanotypes. They let you experiment with the same idea in two var variations. I like all these. Let's give them a little more water. I got some here. This is just regular water from the kitchen sink because we are lucky enough to live in a country where that happens and it's even safe to drink. That was almost a song lyric. I don't know how to wrap, wrap it up. And since these are pretty much all developed, let's check the back. Looking good. Okay, are these all done? Is there another one? No, that's a different one. Let us, I'm gonna take this away and we're going to dump this water out and I'm gonna put these on a drying screen and then we can look at them in a little more detail. So right now I'm just taking the tub full of water with spent developer in it, which the developer is technically the chemistry that is on the paper itself because we only added water. Um, I'm dumping it into the sink because it is a safe enough chemistry to wash into our plumbing system. And I'm going to fill up a little more water into the tank, the tub. And what that's going to do is kind of wash off the residual developer from that last development. You know, as, as they develop, they get a little coating of their own development on them. And then the next session of washing them is designed to remove that 
last little lingering bit of chemistry from the paper. Because if you take these out before they're fully developed, the paper will continue to be able to expose and it will continue to react with light. And both of those things are kind of problematic for archiving. Meaning if you think you have a cyanotype today, but it wasn't fully developed, it will continue to react the next time you take it into the sun and it won't be the same cyanotype you thought you were going to look at. Maybe that's not a bad thing, but it's something to be aware of. Super cyanotypes. There we are. Put those back there for our enjoyment for a moment. Okay, take this first one out and I'm just gonna set it right on this window screen. There we go. I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit so we can fit one extra one on here. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one because it looks like it's got a little more development still to be done. Yeah, there's definitely some yellow in this water from that. Okay, the cookie cutters are done. There we go. So now we have these two and I'm gonna let that little bit drip back down in there. And now I'm going to take another screen and we can remove these ones from the water. There we go, and we got this last one. These dry as well. Okay, now we can have a little bit of fun and look at these in some daylight. Because they're all developed now, so the sunlight's only going to help us understand them now. Like this. Cool. Okay, well, let's look at this one first, the cookie cutter. Let's go this way. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the resolution of cyanotype is high. There is a lot of, um, of detail. You can even see the screen grid from where they're drying underneath it. Here, I'll lift it up. There we go. But you can see it's, there's just so much fine detail and texture in all these. 
So plenty to do with cyanotype. Here's our box cube. And uh, let's see if we can see what it looks like underneath. Oh, there's nothing on that side. Okay. Let's check these ones out. These are the, the Sega Genesis and the Super NES controllers. That looks pretty nice. These are those Kapla blocks. You can see there's many different kind of, I don't know what to call them. I don't know, to me that looks like a circuit board schematic or maybe a, an x-ray looking through a city at a skyscraper. Let's look at this one. And here's that one, which I think is actually the best of the bunch in that it's very simple. I like a simple cyanotype. Let's see if the back is simple too. I feel like it's a little more complicated. Eh, it's not more complicated, it just has less logic. This is my editorializing. I just don't think there's as much logic to that side. Like, why is this white and why is these, why are these two white? I like the, I like the clear cut nature of this gradient. So I think if there's a winner from this experience that I want to put up on the wall, it's this. And I'm glad we made all the other ones together as well. Look at all this fun we had around here. Boom, boom. That's good times. I will say thank you for joining me because I had a lot of fun. I hope this was enlightening and that cyanotypes are a little more for you as a result.